really important science of correspondences, William Blake and Daisetsu Teitaro Suzuki. William Wittenborg influenced William Blake and Daisetsu Teitaro Suzuki. And to show how Blake and Suzuki, though very much different in time and place they were born and active, resonated with each other through Swedenborg. Could you please uh, show the, no, that's next one. Next screen, please. Yes, please, thank you very much. In 1909, Suzuki returned to Japan by way of Europe after working for 11 years from 1897 to 1908 under Paul Keras, an expatriate German philosopher, translator, and a magazine editor of Open Court Press in Chicago, producing a German, uh, uh, no, produ producing a translations of various East Asian religious works. During his stay in America, he published Outlines of Mahayana Buddhism, Daijo Bukkyo Gairon, in 1907, which established himself as an authority on Buddhism and affiliated with any universities or academic institutions. Soon after his return to Japan, he started publishing the translations of Swedenborg's major works. In 1913, Suzuki wrote a small book on Swedenborg's life and thought in Japanese, Swedenborg in Japanese. In 19 12, Suzuki was invited to deliver a short address, a Japanese impression of Swedenborg, at the annual meeting of the Swedenborg Society in London. During the course of his lecture, Suzuki enumerates Swedenborg's distinctive features, such as calmness, serenity, poise, and the clearness of intellect, and he refers to his reception in Japan and says that the outlook for Swedenborgian works in Japan is favorable because there are many indications pointing toward a religious revival in Japan. Suzuki also gives three reasons why he should study Swedenborg in earnest, one of which he says it is because Swedenborg theological doctrines greatly resemble those of Buddhism. Blake and Suzuki resonate with each other in their own use of science of correspondences. Blake made copious marginal notes on Swedenborg's works. From these marginal notes, we can easily see what attracted Blake most about Swedenborg are his concepts of correspondence and influx. In particular, science of correspondences or a system of analogies is pervading almost all Blake's works, even after he apparently rejected Swedenborgianism. Swedenborg gives a succinct definition of science of correspondences. Quote, there are two words, the spiritual and natural, and the spiritual world does not derive anything from the natural world, nor the natural world derive anything from the spiritual world. They are altogether distinct and communicate only by correspondences. They become one, yeah, are joined together by correspondences." Unquote. Despite of all his accusations of Swedenborg, Blake seems to have returned to his former or favorable view of Swedenborg in 1809 at his one-person exhibition. In his exhibition catalogue, a descriptive catalogue of pictures, 1809, Blake refers to Swedenborg's true Christian religion as a text upon which an ex exhibition picture number eight, the spiritual preceptor, is based. Blake cites number 623 from the third memorable relation of chapter 10 of true Christian religion as a text for the picture. The text is a description and an exposition of a vision seen by Swedenborg. Could you move on to the next? Yes, thank you very much. The title of the picture, The Spiritual Preceptor, denotes perhaps Swedenborg himself. Uh, let us see what Swedenborg has to say about the doctrine of correspondence and how it works in practice. Blake says 
in the catalog of, of the picture that the works of this of this visionary that is Swedenborg, the works of this visionary are well worthy the attention of painters and poets. They are foundations for grand things. Unquote. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the picture is lost, so we have no idea of what it was really like. But it is unmistakably clear that the two key issues implied in the text are correspondence and spiritual versus material. On the other hand, Suzuki also frequently refers to what he calls the principle of correspondence, especially in his Swedenborg's view of heaven and other powers. He says that Swedenborg's symbolic philosophy is built on the principle of correspondence. Could you please move on next, number two? Thank you very much. Suzuki enlarges upon the principle. Please refer to quotation two. <clears throat> And please, next slide, and thank you very much. Please refer to quotation three. Towards the end of the quotation two, Suzuki adds that a pure land of this world of suffering can also be considered a pure land of tranquil light, which originally means Shaba Sok Jakko Jodo. Suzuki is here connecting Swedenborg's heaven to the pure land of Amida Buddha of the Jodo sect. Shaba equates in Sanskrit Saha or Saba, signifying the mundane world in which people endure various forms of pains. Sok means equal, and Jakko Jodo indicates the pure land of Amida Buddha. In other words, Shaba Sok Jakko Jodo signifies this mundane world of ours equals or in close proximity to the pure land of Amida. Pure Land School was founded by, by Hornin in 1175. Suzuki goes on to make more comments on the doctrine or correspondence. Please refer to quotation four. No. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you very much. <clears throat> the quote, the first two lines. The doctrine of correspondence is profound. In terms of Buddhism, it is similar uh, to the Shingon philosophy of phenomena. Jiso. A reference to the doctrine appears as many as four times in such a short quotation, which shows how deeply Suzuki himself is engaged with it. Suzuki, as an authority of Zen Buddhism, speculates on the core doctrine of Swedenborg's Christian philosophy. In the quotation, Suzuki compares the doctrine of correspondence to Shingon philosophy of phenomena. Shingonshu, or the Shingon, or mantra, or true word, Shingon School of Buddhism was founded by Kukai in 816. Please refer to next. Next to <coughs> plate, please. Number five. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Blake criticizes Swedenborg's failure in abolishing the dualism between body and soul in the voice of the devil of the marriage of heaven and hell. A Blake and critique of Swedenborgian dualism is seen in his opposition against one form of dualist, the Cartesian link distinction between soul and body, as in man has no body distinct from his soul, for that called body is a portion of soul discerned by the five senses. Unquote. On the other hand, Blake proposes a monism in which body and soul are in a dynamic way intermingling with each other. The first four lines of auguries of innocence is please refer to quotation five, very, very famous four lines. The four lines could be read especially in terms of Swedenborgian correspondence, because all the couplets are only a poetic statement of Swedenborg's theory of the de dependence of one order of life and upon another, of the object or effect upon its correspondent or cause. If we read the four lines in terms of Swedenborgian theory, we could have on one hand a grain of sand, a white flower, the palm of your hand, and an hour. And on the other, we have a world, a heaven, infinity, and eternity. Blake gives us two different and distinct realms which correspond to each other. In other words, Blake tells us that the grain of sand co correspond 
to a world, a wide flower to heaven, the palm of a hand to infinity, and an hour corresponds to eternity. The four lines constitute, we might say, Blake's dictionary of correspondences. But what is important is that when he says to see a world in a grain of sand, Blake is not simply comparing a world with a grain of sand, nor using, as in Swedenborg, an explanatory phrase by correspondence, but making them super superpose each other or making them interpenetrate each other. And by so doing, he tried to abolish a distinction between the two realms implicit in Swedenborg. For Blake, immediacy between the two is what matters most because he believes that the Swedenborgian phrase by correspondence is appropriate only for analytical dem demonstration, not for in intuitional assertion. Please go on to six. Yes, thank you. To make sure the difference between Blake and Swedenborg in their use of correspondence, let me quote again the same passage from True Christian Religion, which I quoted at the beginning of the paper. When he writes that the phenomena A appears like B by correspondence, Swedenborg means A corresponds with B. By using the phrase, Swedenborg only theoretically explains and illustrates its mechanism, and he's well aware that A is different from B. In other words, you might say that the phrase by correspondence operates like a microscopic lens. A microscopic vision is always double. Any microscopist is aware that he is facing two kinds of reality. The one reality exists on this side of the lens, while the other lies on the other side of the lens. Examined through a microscope, the object A seems metamorphosed into B, but two ob objects still remain the same and separate. Blake is ordering here. Blake is ordering us to see them in such a way as they might be fused together and transformed into something else. Though he seems to follow Swedenborgian theory of correspondence, Blake immediately forces us to have an intuitive looking into the nature of things in contradistinction to the analytical or logical understanding of it. Blake reveals a new world hitherto unperceived hitherto a new world, hitherto unperceived in the confusion of a dualistically trained mind. Two books that mark the beginning and end of Suzuki's career as a Zen Buddhist scholar are Outlines of Mahayana Buddhism, 1907, and Mysticism, Christian and Buddhist, 1957. It is noteworthy that in these works, Suzuki makes comparative studies between Buddhism and Christianity, and the book in mysticism, in particular, Suzuki finds mysticism underlying both Buddhism and Christianity. Suzuki writes that, quote, in terms of Buddhism, the doctrine of correspondence is similar to the Shingon philosophy of phenomena, which means that the phenomena of the tangible world and aspects of Maruvelokana, or great illumination Buddha's continual preaching, Suzuki's view of Swedenborgian science of correspondence is almost always affirmative, friendly, and positive, so much so that Suzuki's view of Blake and Augury's innocence is affirmative, favorable, and positive as well. Suzuki goes from simple superposition to interpenetration without identifying a heaven with a grain of sand or without differentiating between them. Suzuki encapsulates encapsulates the first line of auguries by a simple but esoteric phrase, as in the one in the many, the many in the one, ichi soku ta, ta soku ichi, which he says is a central perception of the truth of Zen. We know we, we, know we live in a world of discrimination, but, but to get into the oneness and allness of things and to live with it is what the Japanese call seeing things, sonomama, in their such use, in their suchness. Suzuki thinks that the phrase the one in the many and the many in the one should be understood as fundamental 
the mystical then experience and as an expression of absolute prajna intuition and is not to be conceptually analyzed. For Suzuki, <clears throat> mysticism is a key word shared by both Oriental Zen and Western Zen, that is Christianity. As he quotes the first four lines of Auguries of Innocence, in particular referring to the first line, Suzuki associates Blake's mysticism with Western Zen and designates Blake, quote, the great mystic in modern England, unquote. Suzuki writes that it is of utmost importance to in interpret the phrase the one, the one in the many, the, the many in the one in its proper sense. People might imagine that it is a pantheism and some students of Zen would agree with it, but this is to be regretted, said Suzuki, for pantheism is something foreign to Zen. Please refer to volume seven and eight. Next plate, please. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Suzuki finds himself interested in the third line of auguries to hold eternity in an hour and writes about the relation between eternity and an hour in his last work mysticism please refer quotation eight when the doubter and the doubt are separated in, in ralph ward emerson's brahma and placed in the serialism of time that is past the present and future the dichotomy cuts into every moment of life darkening forever the light of eternity. Suzuki goes on and refers to Blake again. The final quotation, let me quote. Living in the light of eternity is to get into the oneness and allness of things and to live with it. This is what the Japanese call seeing things sonomama in their suchness, which in Blake, within Blake's terms is to hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. Unquote. According to Fumihiko Sueki, Suzuki's Mahani, Mahayana Buddhism, Daijo Bukkyo, Mahayana Buddhism, is another name of his modernized Japanese Buddhism. He seeks for a Buddhism which could not only integrate all types of Buddhism, but also integrate or even include Christianity. He even says that Christ is conceived by Buddhists also as a manifestation of Dhammakaya or Hoshin in a human form. This immediately reminds us of Blake's tractate, All Religions Are One, especially its principle five. The religions of, the, of all nations are derived from each nation's different receptor of the poetic genus, which is everywhere called the spirit of prophecy. Thank you very much.